In our last video, we learned that the controller can communicate with both the model and the view by directly updating the view's objects in code, as well as accessing the model objects and creating instances of them. Now we want to learn how do the model and the view communicate with the controller. If we look at our diagram here, we see that our controller has green arrows, meaning that it always has access to all the information in both the model and the view. However, we have gray arrows from the view and the model back to the controller, which is a hint that it views and models communicate slightly differently than our controller does to our view and our model. Well, so how does the view communicate with the controller? When our button is pressed, which is a view object, our view controller did something. Specifically, it executed the code within the curly braces of our target action method. This communication from the view to the view controller is always blind. Each button that we dragged created boilerplate code, but did not have any predefined implementation. The view has two common methods of alerting the view controller that something has occurred on the view. These are target action and delegation slash data source. You've already seen examples of target action when we hooked up our button. In this case, when we press the button, it sends a message to another object. In this case, it's our view controller. Hence, we can say that our view controller is the target because, it, because it's receiving the message from the button. The message that's sent is known as the action. How can we think about this? Well, think about the view being blissfully unaware of what's going inside of our view controller class. When users press a button on the screen, the view doesn't want to have to figure out what should occur. Instead, our view controller is tasked with making things occur dynamically when the user presses a button. So what happens when the user presses a button? Well, assuming we've set up our button properly, we should be able to send a message to our view controller. Or we can say that we can send a message to our target that we were pressed. It's not enough to simply tell our view controller that we were pressed. We also need to tell our view controller which method it should call. We call this message our action. The other way we can communicate from the view to our controller is through delegation or data source. Delegation is a pretty advanced topic. However, due to the design of so many of Apple's view objects, we are forced to cover this early in the course. If this doesn't make immediate sense to you, give it some time. It took me quite a while when I was first learning how to program to fully understand delegation. Like target action, let me first start with an abstract metaphor. Like buttons, delegation of view objects are also blind. An example of a view object you have probably seen before is your contact list. All of your contacts are housed in a table view, which is a way we can organize rows of information in iOS. However, unlike target action, where our view simply tells the view controller that it has been pressed, our contact list is a bit more complicated. It would be really difficult to have to figure out which contact had been pressed, and especially since the contact list scrolls and there are many, many items on it. So to help us out, Apple created a class called UI Table View Delegate. Every time our user completes some sort of action on our table view or our contact list, the UI table view delegate class broadcasts a message to all other classes that have been properly set up to listen for those messages. Assuming that our view controller is properly set up to listen for these events, we could implement the delegate methods defined in the UI table view delegate class. If, for example, we wanted to figure out where the user was tapping in our contact list, we could implement a method named did select row at index path. Adding this method to our view controller will allow us to listen for events from the UI table view delegate class. Once our user taps on an arrow or on a cell, we'll, it'll call the method in our view controller class and we can do custom functionality. Another added benefit is that the delegate method will also often provide us with additional helper information that is included as a parameter. For example, with the method did select row at index path, we gain access to the parameter index path, which tells us which row in our table view the user selected. Though delegation is intimidating at first, in the long run it is meant to not hurt, but to help. Apple's awesome classes abstract away a ton of difficult functionality, and we get to concentrate on making awesome apps. 
You will see an example of this in our next project. Finally, what does blind mean? Well, the views again here never reference our view controller anywhere. They can be moved around and placed on multiple view controllers. Now let's move over to our model. Our model speaks to the view controller in a blind sort of manner known as notification center and key value observing. These are more advanced topics, so don't worry about them for now. The big takeaway is that our, model, our models never drive our view controller. Though they can alert our view controller that the data has changed, they should remain blissfully unaware of what's going on inside of the view controller. I want to stress that our model objects or our data never ever communicate directly with our views. The controller is the middleman of this communication and has free reign to talk to both camps. For example, when we press a button, we would never immediately tie that to making a change to our model. If a change needed to be made, our UI button would alert the view controller that it had been pressed through target action and then the view controller would adjust the model.